do you have certain goal, specific goals that you're coming into the spring that you want to get out of uh, these couple weeks here? Uh, yeah, I, I, I mean, the number one goal is uh, to get better at everything we do in this defense, one practice at a time. Uh, and I've said this before, and I'm going to say it again. We've got miles to go. We got miles to go. It starts all over again. The race starts started when we started winter conditioning. It it the race heats up when we start practice. And if we don't improve on every phase of our defense in each one of those, you're going to fall backwards. And and uh, the schedule we play, um, you can't take a step back in any way. And not improving is taking a step back. And that's what our that's what these guys got to do. What have you seen from Will Campbell's conditioning and everybody else? Were you pretty pleased overall with what you saw? Yeah, yeah. You know, I you maybe have heard me say this before. I I think we're blessed here because I believe we have one of the best strength and conditioning coaches in the country. And for us to be out there and watch uh, what Aaron has done with those guys, I think he would have been the front runner of us getting them to be better. And so he's pushed them and. And what I've been able to see legally when I could be out there, it looks like they're responding. It looks like they're all, they understand this is Team 133. And, boy, you've got, you, you got what we've all said all along. The bar at Michigan is as high as it can ever be, and that's what it's supposed to be, and you've got a lot of work to get up to that bar. And uh, I, I see that, and when I'm down there every once in a while, I see them working to do that. Brady talked about the scholarship numbers on the offense and defensive line and how we, you guys aren't exactly where you need to be right now. How do you, how do you deal with that? And... Well, it's a, that, that's the head coach's job. You know, that's him. I don't get into that very much. I mean, as of like right now, I mean, it seems like. We have to deal with what we have, you know, and uh, that's one thing you find out about college. You can't go trade one guy for two other guys somewhere. So, Whatever we have right now, we've got to put those guys as if we were playing tomorrow and put them at the best position and see if you can't get them to the level that we want them to get them at. And, and I think that's what we're doing with some of our guys, saying, okay, let's, let's see what, who would be the best at this position and let's put them there. You, you don't want to do is uh, if you have a whole bunch of guys at one position, say, oh, good there. You've got to try to find a way if we were playing – who would we put there? And let's get this guy there. Because don't, you don't ever want to go into a season and say, we got a really good freshman coming in. Because freshmen are still freshmen, you know, and especially in this program. So what you have in that room right now, that's who you better plan on playing with. And then anybody that steps it up uh, is a bonus, you know. And we'll always play the best players. So if a guy coming in from a high school uh, that we just signed – is the best player, then he'll be the best player. But he's got to earn that. Was, was moving Craig to where you did part of put, putting him in the best position? Yes. Uh, uh, we did a lot of thinking about that. And, and Jabril is the same thing, Jabril Black. Uh, I, want, I want to always have a very, very uh, fast uh, – uh, disruptive defense. That's what you, you always need to have, especially up front. Craig Rowe has played some very, very good football here. Craig Rowe will be a better football player moving into a five technique than he would be out on the edge where there's a lot of open spaces. And Jabril Black, the same thing. If a guy can get big and strong which I believe they can, and talking to Aaron, I thought we, that that could happen. Now you become faster when you move an edge player inside. And, uh, and now there's competition with uh, Brendan Beyer and with uh, Frank Clark at the outside position. So you want to be able to put your people in the best position but have competition when you're doing it, and I think that's what's happened so far. When did those you moves? start thinking about making those two specific moves? Was that right after the season was over with. And, you know, again, when the season's over, what you do is you say, okay, now let's look at next year. How can we be as good as we can be? You know, what's the best way for this defense to be as good as you can be? And, again, taking what you have in that room. And, uh, and that's what we did. And we felt uh, that, that that was the best to get the best players on the field 
at one time. Were those things that you saw during the year, last year? Yeah, yeah. I think this could work. Yeah, as a coach, what you do is when you're watching a player and you're evaluating them and you see him make a play and you might say, boy, that was hard for him, but he made a good play. And he may not have had to work quite as hard had he been at this position. You know, so then in the back of your mind saying he's still the best you have uh, for that for that time. Okay, now when we get an opportunity, maybe we'll move him. Maybe we'll see if we can't get him in a position where it's not quite as hard for him to do what he just did. And that's what you're always evaluating as a coach. You talk about the level of teaching and learning that's going to have to go into those spots this spring. Well, the, the one thing that I've been happy with is last year was very difficult. And I look back and I think in terms of our players, the first time we put in the defenses, they looked at me like I was trying to teach them German or something, you know, and they're just going, what are you doing, you know? And so I remember the first practices, we had a ready list that I wanted to get taught, and I think in the next practice I said, cut that all down by half and we're going to go backwards and do this. Well, this year in putting in what we want to work on this spring, the players just look at you and go, got it. Got it. I understand that. You know, this is what we have done. The terminology is there. They don't have to worry about who is uh, Kurt Mallory and, and who is Jerry Montgomery. Okay, these guys have just went through the war with them. And so if they say this is what you're supposed to do, if Mark Smith says this is what you're supposed to do, okay, I got you. You know, and so the learning curve and them believing in what is being taught and them knowing that this is the kind of defense we're going to play and this is how this is what is expected all those are kind of gone and now they hear it all the time from us but now they can just say okay and what happens once they know that defense then they can understand why they should do little subtleties to allow them to play better instead of just saying okay on this defense i line up as a three technique well why do you want me to tighten down well, because if something's coming from the outside, oh, I got it now. All those kind of things um, in a very short time, in two days that we had them, I, I've liked that. I, I, this group of guys, I don't know how good they're going to be. I know how good I expect them to be, but I don't know how good they're going to be. One thing I've, I've liked about them so far is they're very willing to do what we're asking them to do. And they've been very coachable. And uh, believe me, we could have – 20 hours to meet with them and it wouldn't be enough but the next day they don't seem to make the same mistakes or they understand what we just said to them and I'm, I'm excited about that that means they're really into it how critical is the next month for Will Campbell when it comes to anything for him in the future it's critical for every guy on our defense Will Campbell's a member of that defense I don't look at Will Campbell and say boy this is really critical for you it's really critical for Jabril Black, and it's really critical for Craig Rowe, and it's really critical for Kenny Denmans. Every day, every day, he either gets better or worse. And you may have heard that as a saying, but that's the way it is here. And so after a practice, we want to say, that, you know, that you didn't get better, so that means you got worse. Or you got better, that's a great sign. Um, I, I don't worry about a future of a guy. The future is – being a Michigan football player and playing as good as you can play. After that, what he does will take care of his future. You know? What specifically do you need to see from him this spring? Consistency. We need to see him playing and play out, playing at a high level. So if he's had one good play, he's got to put two together, and then he's got to put three together. That's, that's it in a nutshell. That, he has shown that he has what you're looking for for a play here and a play there and a couple plays here. And a, now we've got to do it consistently. We've got to do it every play. And that's everybody. Have you had guys that, that late in their career where the light's really kind of gone on in their last Oh, year? no question. No question. I, that's, uh, that's probably happened more than not, you know, that um, all of a sudden they become – and here especially. I think here at Michigan, maybe more in any place, because as a senior you're expected that. I mean, it's so, it's so much – in them that when you are a senior that is your job and that is what you better do and don't come out there as a senior and not improve don't do that that's not accepted here who, yeah, do, you, like, who do you see as the, the take charge guys on this defense so far it's been too early 
it's been too early, you know, and I don't want to say based on a guy running the 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 drills we did in the winter conditioning because we've all had guys that are great at yelling in the winter conditioning and then when the pads come on and until we get the pads on until I see them hitting and executing when they're beat up a little bit and everything like that you know we'll know at the end of spring you know and even then I'm not going to be able to say this guy's our leader because we won't find out who that leader is until the game when it's the it's really down until you're behind you know, and who's going to step up now? You know, and um, that's when we'll know. But, but I can't tell you right now. Is it fair to say that Kovacs would be a guy you would anticipate would be in that position, though, from what you saw last year? Kovacs was a leader last year. So we'll find out this year. You know, nothing, nothing in this program is entitled. Nothing. And uh, I love him. I mean, Jordan Kovacs, I love him. Okay, every day Jordan Kovacs got to get better, and every day he's got to go out there and see if he can't become a better safety than what he was last year. The, the secondary played really well last year, but struggled in those last two games against Ohio State and Virginia Tech. Have you had a chance to identify what broke down there? Yeah, the, the one great thing for us as coaches that we've been able to do in the off season is we got we've got a chance to really evaluate our program. I mean, really. You know, and these new coaches and, and these guys all had to put – they were like the same way. I mean, putting in all new defenses. Everything's new to them, a lot of them too. And so now after watching it throughout the year, they come up with suggestions. And they say, now, what if we did this? What if we did that? So it's all – and I, I like I told them, this is their defense now. This is this is – this is the Michigan defense, so it's everybody's defense now. And I think we as coaches all understand the little things that will help rather than just saying, hey, this is cover two, and in cover two you do this, for example. Uh, and and I, I feel like our kids have learned faster already too because of that. And a lot of it's the way you teach them, you know, and um, – yeah, you know, I I think our guys, our coaches have done a great job of studying that and okay, this is how we can help ourselves here. Um, I we've got to improve, you know. You know, if you said that the secondary, if you said that the defensive line or the linebackers was good, I wouldn't say that. You know, I, I'd say we did some things good, but it's the same for us as coaches and and as our program. You got to do it every play, and like you said, the Ohio State game and and. You can't have that, you know. You know my feeling on big plays. One of them makes you want to get sick to your stomach, okay? And we we had too many of them at the end of the year, which means we've got to go back and see why and get that all corrected. Something to spe specifically you're looking at this spring to correct that issue, the big plays? I, I think it's technique. I think it's just being better at your technique, being more focused, being, uh, you know, a lot of times big plays come from busted assignments so then that means we better make sure if the guy was confused on that why was he confused and let's get it corrected you know all those are the kind of things I think you see happening in a second year you know where we're all together on the same page the the, the guy out there playing the coach and myself and that's that's my job what are you looking at from Thomas Gordon this, this spring what are you looking for him? well I'm looking for him to play a lot faster and I've told him that straight out I, I, I love Thomas Gordon. I, I mean, I, you know, he's a great young man that has ability, but he must play faster. He must play more reckless. And, uh, and you know, I think sometimes guys worry about, are they fast enough? Can I do this? Well, yeah, you got to be able to do it. If you're going to be out there, you got to be able to do it. And he knows that. And uh, we'll see during the spring if he does play faster. What does more reckless mean to you? you take that? a shot. Take a shot. And, and that goes with what I was mentioning about knowing the scheme. I think sometimes when you're a safety coming down like he does, you kind of hesitate because you don't want him to run by you. But there's times when you can go hit that because you've got a corner and another safety playing behind you. So if you miss him, somebody else will make that play. And I think – after yesterday's practice, I think maybe he's understanding that a little bit. Maybe he's saying, oh, I get it. I get it. Plus, give yourself a little credit. You, you can run pretty well, you know, and don't think that everybody's going to outrun you.
You know, and I think that's knowing yourself, knowing the scheme, and that will allow you to play faster. What have you seen from Jared Wilson? <clears throat> Excuse me? What have you seen from Jared Wilson? Um, he's young. He's, you know, I've seen that he's a guy that's got his books in his hand and he just came from a class that he's never seen before. And, uh, and he saw some pretty girls probably, you know, I hope, you know, and, and, uh, I, I do, I do tell you this, I'm glad he's here. I'm glad he's here. I'm glad all those freshmen are here. I wish we could have our entire signee class come early. That would be, uh, but uh, I can't evaluate him yet. I can't evaluate any of the freshmen yet because they've had no pads, you know, and, uh, but I do like their attitudes. I'll tell you that. I do like their attitudes. Coach, considering how much size you lost last year, Heineger was a big guy, Van Bergen, Martin, has that change how you approach it? Then how much weight or how much physically different can Roe and Jabril Black, you know, get before next season or how much have they changed? First, I thought you were talking about me. I thought you were talking about me losing weight. I thought, geez, I don't think I've lost that much weight. I've been trying hard, though. But, uh, uh, no, um, Craig Rowe and Jabril Black are working really, really hard at gaining weight and getting stronger. And, uh, you know, what will happen is if you don't have big will and you don't have uh, – uh, Mike Martin and things like that, then the guys that fill in for him, number one, got to play with great technique because you don't have that buffer, okay? And the other things you might have to do is move them a little bit. You know, I mean, the one thing, if they are if they are guys that uh, aren't as big but they happen to have pretty good movement, again, remember, you've got Jabril and Craig Rowe who were the outside guys that had to be fast, now we've moved them in because maybe we thought that they could help. Well, then we might want to move them a little bit too. So, you know, I think there's things like that that we can do, which we will do to allow our players to play as good as they can play. To put an emphasis on Big Will because he is the, the meat in the middle that you needed to win your defense? Well, there's no added emphasis on him. My philosophy has always been you're only as good as you are down the middle. You can't have a great defense unless it starts at the nose, then it goes to the backers, and then it goes to the safety. And any great defense I've ever seen is strong right down the middle. And so it obviously starts with the nose. You talk about the comfort level of knowing the system now. How much difference should that make with this group of linebackers? Well, I think it's got to make a lot of difference. Um, you know, again, we made no bones about it. I think we have to improve at that position. Uh, you know, and one of the things I think we've worked very, very hard at is uh, our underneath coverage. You know, I think that's something we, we saw when we watched the tape, that we, we have to get better at that. And we've got to get more eyes on the football. If you're not the fastest player, then you better see that quarterback to gain a step. And if you don't, then you're just going to get tore apart as far as not having enough speed. So I, I, that's been a big emphasis for us. Our underneath coverage is something that we're, we're going to work very, very hard on. Just a couple more. How have, you mentioned uh, Wilson. How have Jared, uh, how have uh, other go to Ringer and Bolden loved this spring? No pads. I love them. I love them, but I haven't seen them. You know, I mean, this isn't cross country, you know, and, and really, they could come out there and they could run like crazy. I love those kids. I'm just going to tell you, I'm so happy they're here, okay? But they can be the best runners in the world. If they won't hit anybody, I won't like them as much, you know, and so we'll wait and see when the pads come on. Thanks, Coach. Thank, thank you very much. Great to see everybody again. Thank you.